Greetings and salutations, folks, and welcome once again, as always, to another helping of Mr. H's Hot Pot. You join me today on New Year's Day, sat on a random car park somewhere in my hometown of Wigan. And before I go any further, a happy new year to each and every one of you. I hope 2024 will be a good one for you, and for myself as well, of course. And today, Hot Potters, I've just come out for a bit of a drive round. If I'm being honest, I've been on the hunt for a meat and prayer to pie. Not because I wanted to do a pie review for you today, but simply, I fancied one. And of course, when you really want something, you can't get hold of it, can you? And all the pie shops, certainly around my part of the world, are closed today. They're all bolted down and buttoned up tight. Even the big hitters, Galloway's and Green Alches, they're all closed. So... I've ended up having to slum it up, Potters. And I have managed to get myself a meat and prayer to pie, but I've had to go to a spa for it, which was open. And they kindly have heated it up in the microwave for me. And uh, here it is. Here's today's item of comestibility. Da, 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 da. Still a little bit hot after being nuked. And not normally how I'd like to eat a pie, but beggars can't be choosers, can they? And today's... Me some prayer to pie comes from Clayton Park Bakery, apparently, and they're from Accrington. So it might be worth storing that in the old memory and see if they have a little shop that you can go into at the bakery and we'll probably be able to review one of their pies properly sometime in the not-too-distant future. But uh, today's item of comestibility, just for reference, cost me... £1.95. £1.95 for a, a meat and prater pie that's been heated up in a microwave. Luckily, they didn't charge me any extra for the use of the microwave. Well, there we go. I'll enjoy that later. So, Potters, brand new year. Brand new start once again. Doesn't seem two minutes since I was sat on a car park up on Hunter's Hill making this style of video and some bell end parked up at the side of me. For those of you who watched that video, do you remember when he opened his car door and banged straight into mine and I get him what for? I didn't realise I'd left the camera rolling. For those of you who didn't watch it or want to watch it once again, I'll stick it in there for you. I'm doing more videos because now little Toby's ready for school. Four years has passed and uh, he's ready for starting school and that is a date that's in the calendar. Cheers, mate. You've all that bloody car park worth at parking and you have to park outside of me. Why? What's the problem? Well, the fact that you probably bloody marked my car. Mark your car, there's no mark on it. It's yeah, it was Sod's Law, that, wasn't it? It was like this one today. Nothing around me and he parked right at the side of me and too close. <laughs> I don't know. The things that happen. What I should do, and I, I, I say it each and every year, obviously, making videos, there's going to be times when you either mess up and you say the wrong thing, or little bloopers happen, you know. You're talking away and there's a dog having a crap at the side of you or something like that. I should, really, make a roll of them and then show them at Christmas. A bit like Dennis Norden used to do, it'll be all right on the night. If you'd like to see that style of video, leave a comment below and uh, depending on how many people say, yeah, they'd be interested in something like that, I'll save all the outtakes and show them at the end of the year. Anyway, on to what I will be doing in the income this coming year. And I've got a number of locations in the old memory bank that I'm going to be visiting in... in the not too distant future. I've got some mining ruins that I want to take a look at, and there's one particular mining area that there's a rather interesting story behind, and I want to get down to that. I've got some Fred Dibner ones, and of course, we'll be doing some more pie reviews and anything else we can think of. Anything else we can think of, because that's why I called this channel Mr. H's Art Pot, simply because in an art pot you throw all kinds of things in to make a lovely stew and. That's what this channel's all about. I know that YouTube normally say that you should stick to one genre, you know, whatever it be. Don't jump from one thing to another. But for me, it seems to have worked out doing it that way. You know, I have quite a number of interests and I try to incorporate them 
into my channel i don't just stick with one thing it must be frustrating for people who just sign up because they've watched one video that i've made on something random and then i hardly cover that again but people seem to stick with it i don't lose that many subscribers every now and again you do but on the whole the majority of you stick with it which is good to see anyway how's your christmas been ours has been i wouldn't say it's been a disaster but it's been different what we've normally done myself and mrs h ever since getting married 13 years ago we've always hosted christmas we've always had the parents over to us rather than us being split between my parents and me and laws we've sort of invited them over unfortunately mrs h's mother my mother-in-law she got covid over the christmas period They'd been on a cruise, so they decided to escape the madness of Christmas. Think, not bother putting decorations up, etc., etc. We'll go on a cruise, which fair play to them. And on Christmas Eve, she rang us up and said, uh, "I've tested positive for COVID, and I don't want to pass it on to to yourselves and to, mainly Toby. So, you know, I'm going to have to bow out this year, and by extension, the father-in-law has to as well because." He may have had it, although he's managed to escape it, thankfully. It just seemed to stick with the mother-in-law. So we put all that preparation into a big day, and unfortunately, it uh, it didn't come off for us. So <laughs> it was a bit of a disaster. But on the flip side, it gave us that opportunity to have an intimate Christmas, just myself and Mrs H and little Toby, that we've never done before. And I enjoyed that. But I do agree with Mrs H. We wouldn't have put as much effort in had it just been us. And that's the problem with Christmas, isn't it? It's the amount of effort you end up putting in for one day that spoils it. You know, we put the decorations up at the back end of November. For no other reason that because Toby is born in early December and we want him to enjoy his birthday and make a, that an occasion, we end up putting the Christmas decorations up, then we put a birthday overlay on them, and then take them off afterwards, and then it's Christmas. And that's how we do it. And because we have to put them up so early, you're stuck with them. And so by the time you get to the 19th of December, the novelty of having Christmas decorations and little lights has worn off. And you think to yourself, if I hear Noddy Older scream, it's Christmas one more time, I'll swing for somebody. <laughs> And that's the problem. By the time Christmas comes round, you just want the day out of the way. By the time the last bit of Christmas pudding has disappeared, you're looking at the decorations and you're mentally taking them down, aren't you? And that's the problem, really. A Christmas I could get behind Hot Potters, I'll be honest with you, is a modest meal with your family and friends, the non-judgmental exchange of gifts, and a few decorations put up just to mark the occasion. That's a Christmas I can get behind. But as I now approach 50, I'll be 50 this year, I'll rack up half a century, hopefully. Hopefully nothing will happen to me before then. But as I turn 50, I find that it's getting more and more hassle. Is that just a thing that comes with age? Leave a comment below if you've found that as you gain older, you too find yourself in the same boat. But I hope you've had a good Christmas anyway. A big thank you to... Lynn and Graham Walker in Leeds. You wish me a Merry Christmas and I didn't get back to you. I do apologise for that. I've just been so busy. And a big thank you to everybody who on my previous video have wished me a Happy New Year. As I say, a Happy New Year to each and every one of you. I hope 2024 will be a good one for you. Anyway, Hot Potters, I think I'll cut it though. I think I'll leave it on that note, just wishing everybody a Happy New Year. And I'll tuck in to this item of comestibility, which hopefully will taste just as good, although... It always spoils the pastry a little bit, doesn't it, when you put it in a microwave. But uh, as I say, beggars can't be choosers on this New Year's Day. So, until the next time, from myself, Mr H, it is bye-bye for now.